Eights. He was the uh, uh, head of state in Africa. Assassinated. When this was the first head of state to die, when the moratorium um, by uh, executive order restricting um, the assassination of heads of state, mm -hmm. Laurent Kabila, he the bald head dude down there oh. with the green shirt on. Yeah, him where you explain that. That's him. Now, the reason why he was a problem because he put the stranglehold on the De Beers Corporation's holdings over there in Africa. Mm -hmm. When he did that, he was a marked man. Yeah. And they used the Manchurian candidate that they had as a sleeper assassin um, to kill him. I Did think it him? was his nephew. All right, go ahead. You going in, man? You telling me some? You got you cracking fucking some the form. You you going into their form? The shit they talk about on the phone. Yeah. Okay. Now, the reason why this is a big deal. Is because the CIA assass uh, uh, hypno assassin program through MK Ultra, mm -hmm. and he was on their list of heads of state to be uh, neutralized in Africa. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the same thing. America assassinated another head of state in Africa named Patrice Lumumba. Mm -hmm. You want to pull him up so the people can see? Yeah, yeah. He's ready. He was a Freemason. What his name is? La, uh, Patrice Lumumba. P A T R I C E. Last name L U M. You guys right here. Yep. The yep. The guy with the glasses on. That's him. It's great, Pam. You see that leopard print hat, right? Yeah. The tribal priest. Okay. This is Africa's Malcolm X right here. Go ahead. This is one badass motherfucker. But let me tell you what they do to this brother. Yeah. Right? They take Laurent La 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 uh, Patrice Lumumba out in the woods, assassinate him, and bury him, right? Uh-huh. You see the picture that he's pointing at the screen? Uh, yeah, right here. Yeah. They went and dug him up, and the French general that dug him up, he said he was terrified because he raised his finger like that as if he was giving his troops one last command. Damn. Now, when I was growing up, what made him so memorable to me is he looked exactly like my Uncle Jake. Mm-hmm. And my Uncle Jake wasn't for no games. He'd beat a motherfucker ass. Mm -hmm. You like a dude. About All this. right, now, when they killed him, they also had, uh, America wasn't behind the murder of uh, uh, Stephen Biko. Mm -hmm. Pull him up so they could see. These people we need to know about, when they talk about Pan-African studies, this is the kind of stuff they're talking about because it's all, it all ties back. They killed him. This was South Africa's Malcolm X. Bad man right here. Went for no games. He the one that's, that told uh, Mandela he, need to, he better strap up. And after they killed him, that's when they captured Mandela. Um, and Because Mandela was on his way to Kenya to meet with somebody called the Kikuyu tribe. Mm-hmm. Now, the Kikuyu tribe is known for their Mau Mau. Pull about Mau up next. M-A-U, M-A-U, two words. Put Kenya behind. You see that brother standing right behind Joe Mokuyata on the last picture at the top? Right here. Yeah, click that picture. All right. He was the field general. I can't I always forget his name. 
This is a guy that Joe Mo Kenyatta sold out when he gave his position away um, to the invaders. Mm -hmm. You see him with his dreadlocks? Yeah, dude with the Willow's Peak. Mm -hmm. He was the leader of the Mau Mau Rebellion against the um, Just like those dirty wolves. Nah, he wasn't no Dirty Moore. The Dirty Moore is the nigga standing on there with the kufi on. Oh, this nigga right here. That nigga. That's Jomo Kenyatta. He became the head of Kenya. Okay. He sold out the resistance. The guy standing next to him put Jomo Kenyatta in power, and he was the leader of the resistance. Mm -hmm. So um, when Jomo Kenyatta got in power, he made deals with the Europeans to end the conflict. And part of the deal was that he would give them the position at a stronghold of the Mau Mau. No, oh, hell no. We ain't going out like that. Now, scroll down a little bit. It's a book on the Mau Mau so they can see what book to read about the Mau Mau Rebellion. You see it? Mm -hmm. It's another one that was next to it, too. Okay, so now the Mau Mau, right? That was uh um in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Right? Keep that in mind. Kenya is the land of Anfu. Okay, go ahead. You know who Anfu is, right? Uh no, I don't I seem like I heard the name, but I can't put it to nobody right you, now. You heard it. That's Anubis. Oh, okay, okay. I know, I know who if you said animals, I would have said, okay, I know who it is. Right. But it's really called the land of the jackal. Okay. They were just explaining right. it just a minute ago in that video. Right. And then we were talking about the jackal and um, Rosemary's baby. The jackal was the baby's father. Mm hmm. And then we were talking about in the old man how the jackal was the baby's father, mm -hmm. but he was buried over in Israel. Mm hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, the omen is the story about the Antichrist. Yeah, that's right. Right? So, while you getting your Pan-African studies, these are the people that tell you that the enemies look like us, but they not us. Mm -hmm. Franz mm -hmm. Fanon. Can you type that in? Yeah. F-R-A-N-Z F A N O N, right? He in another part of Africa. I think he was in Sierra Leone, fighting the liberation struggle there, or either in Algiers. I can't remember which one. Uh, what his name is he in? Um, man, you forget it's in France. F R A N Z, and then his last name is Fanon. F A N O N. Okay. Uh, that was the right guy. A white no, that's not, no, no. Put in uh put in black face white mask. Just take that out and put in black face white mask. Check with the audience, young girl, to see how they how they doing over there. Make sure we ain't boring them. Yeah, it's almost time. We already over the time already, but uh it's all good. See that black and white book right there with the writing on it? Yeah. Click on that. You see the name, France Fanon? Mm hmm All right. And there's another one, a guy named Walter Rodney. Walter Rodney was a psychiatrist. Now, we talking Pan-Africanism. You see what the title of that book is? Black Skin, White Mask. Walter what? Rodney, R O D N E Y. He from Africa? Yep. He looked like the other dude just showed us. Mm, different guy. No, 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 but they look like they could probably be like, you know, Kenny. You see the, where it got a quote of him at right there? Get the one yeah. with the quote on it. Because right, he be yeah. saying some dope ass shit. All right, I got it. Yeah, we already over the time limit though. So uh yeah, we we just I'm just gonna show them up what the people look like we're talking about. Okay, I got you. Right. So 
this in the Pan African Studies, and they giving us all of the, the issues that they face with over there to match to the issues we face with over here, mm -hmm. and then make adjustments for the cultural difference between the two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They tell us that we from over here, and that the motherfuckers that's invading them are the same people invading us. Uh. So this is what the Garvey uh, confraternity was all about. Organic people of the land from all over the planet been here the whole time. But it was somebody that don't have a homeland nowhere on the planet. That means they don't belong here. Exactly. Right? Because even nomads is, is native to a part of the land. Exactly. If they earthborn. Right? So these people go everywhere we at. They come in. So seeds of dissension turn one against the other, and then they stand back like they didn't throw the rock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And while we get to fight, and they come offer us a solution for a fee. Mm -hmm. And when they offer us a solution, they leave a condition that was worse than it was when they came. Mm -hmm. Right? So the last guy we're going to look up is Maurice Bishop. Y'all need to be familiar with who he is. Since we're talking about greats, he's from the Caribbean, from Grenada. The CIA assassinated him in uh, 80, around 83. Hey, spell his name? Um, M A U R I C E, Maurice, last name Bishop, B I S H O P. Yeah, you were talking about this dude on one of the other tapes. I got a picture of him, too. Uh, really. mm -hmm. You see him sitting, standing there with Castro? Yeah. Yeah. America, CIA, the CIA had him hit. They joined with a, a rogue faction over there and took him out of power because he the one, he built the first um, national airport, international airport in Granada. He built it. Yeah. That was part of what he was doing to bring in um, and galvanize the economy of Granada. America couldn't stand him. Go listen to some of his speeches. Okay, he wanted them to sell. He wanted America. Wanted him to sell his people up. Yeah, he he was tired of the sellout shit. He was just grassroots rose to the prominence, took over. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. and CIA had his, had him killed, had him murdered in a coup. They established a coup and had him murdered. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. yeah. Let's scroll through. We're going to take uh, we take about three, four questions out and wrap it up. All right. All right. Uh, let's see what y'all got, man. Somebody said, what makes you synthetic? Which I don't, I don't get the question. Me neither. Uh, let me find another one. It says, uh, it says, what point you need the most of the characters dead? Hey, if you got your questions, drop them in the chat. So, we're taking about three or four questions. I hope y'all have some good ones. We can take a couple questions before we wrap this one up. This is the water and the fire. This is how these motherfuckers flood us out or burn us out. You know what I'm saying? This is how. They all over the world. They got their hands in everybody else' dirt. They pay money to set other governments up, but they won't take care of the people in the government that they're supposed to be operating on the behalf Thanks. of. Thanks. They telling us history and the method and the manner to make us believe that we the victors when all the time we the victims. Mm -hmm. So once we realize that they told us the history upside down and backwards, we can flip that shit around, turn it back upside right. And then we can see it for what it is. Mm -hmm. We ain't come on no motherfucking slave ships. That don't make no motherfucking sense. Why would you bring 300 million motherfuckers from Africa when you got 300 million motherfuckers here already? That mm -hmm. just doesn't make sense. The motherfuckers ain't never been accused of being goddamn fools. They know that that doesn't make economic sense. If you can get your motherfucking POWs to do the work, and then later on you can use that as a victim position, to keep them motherfuckers subservient. We call that post-traumatic slave disorder. It's actually post-traumatic POW disorder. 
prisoner of war. It's a uh, Stockholm syndrome that was instituted using Pavlovian response and motherfucking Skinner boxes. Keep your motherfucking mind numb. So now we just showing bits and pieces of the puzzle to the people so the people can see that we know what we're talking about when we tell you these motherfuckers came over here with bad intentions for us and now we know who the fuck we is, we can then redeem ourselves from the oppressor's oppression. You ain't gonna never get out of this shit unless you figure out that you have to divorce yourself from the motherfucking system. You gotta walk off everything, leave this motherfucker hanging, because what we got coming on the heels of this shit, everything gonna be restored with honor and dignity. Ain't none of this shit gonna be able to stand if the motherfuckers ain't treated right. Each one teach one, we all gonna reach some. So what you seeing in the motherfucking question, though? Anybody got hey, somebody to ask that? you? Can you break down? Uh, you know anything about the brother Simeon Toko? Oh, from uh, from, uh, from Africa. Yeah. Um, uh, watch his videos. He shit. He here. He kicks off for himself. <laughs> you gotta learn how to pay attention to what people put people energy. How sincere are they versus what's an agenda? I ain't got no agenda. I ain't asking nobody for no money. I ain't asking nobody to come do nothing for me. I'm just on here giving free knowledge out and showing y'all where to look for critical pieces. That brother over there, um, if he if, he, if he talking about the same one I'm thinking about, because it could be talking about a different one, but that brother over there, he, he's, he's saying what the fuck he said. He ain't you know, he not backing down and um, he, he, he know what's going on. He, he evicting the imposters off the land over there. Mm -hmm. so you know we ain't gotta always speak on everybody that's doing the work watch help a motherfucker out right you know it's it's more people doing the work than i can mention and sometimes i be getting two people crossed when i'm on a different pattern on a different path mm -hmm. but i think you're talking about the brother that always be wearing the red that be over and uh, be doing all of the uh, political speeches in Africa. I got a picture of him on the screen. Foster. Huh? I got a picture of him on the screen. Click that. Uh, okay. I, I'm not familiar. Oh, that's the dude that they said was uh, the Black Jesus from yeah, um, the Magic Tricks and shit. Yeah. Yeah, they said that they chopped him up into pieces and took his parts, to different parts of the mm -hmm. world. Set him on fire, and then he came back and said, "Y'all ain't ready for me yet." Yeah, yeah, on some get high shit. Yeah, I thought he was talking about that political leader over there. I, I, I now I know he's talking about. Yeah, he talking about Simeon Toko, the dude that uh, my homeboy was from Africa. He told me they uh, he said like turn into a this, this this story this story not a secret. Mm -hmm. This story not a secret. This shit that this shit been known since it happened. Mm -hmm. They bought right. him, threw him on a plane. Yeah, no they chopped his body up. Look, they killed him, chopped his body up on the plane, sent his, uh, no, chopped his body up, sent him on planes to different parts of the world, then burnt up the body parts. Mm -hmm. And then he came right back and told him, y'all ain't ready for me yet. I'm going to have to leave so y'all learn how to live. Um like me. There is a guy in uh, India named Babaji. Same thing, except he's from India. Mm -hmm. And Babaji this means the old soul or the ancient one or the ancient soul or the ancient father, Baba's father. G mean great, great father. Mm -hmm. Right? If you put Babaji in there, you will see he's sitting cross-legged with long string hair. Hey, spell it. B A B A J I. Yeah, right here's uh, one. Of the, man, it's nigga, on the second row. Well, no, it ain't on second. It's on the second row. Not them. That's them right there um, to the left of that. To the left of that. What are you going way down there for? Was what? Go back the other way. This way? It, no, we just passed it again. No, not him. The one that's a drawing. Oh, the one right here. Yeah. That's the drawing of him. And scroll back over with some, another one on that same row at the end. 
That's another drawing of him. Okay. But he still appeared to people, been appearing to people for thousands of years in India. He can embody and disembody at will. So the science behind dematerialization is, is uh, and your spirit body, your light body, mm -hmm. can separate from your physical body, right? Mm -hmm. When you get to the destination that your light body can travel instantly, it doesn't need uh, it, it, it doesn't need time to travel through space like a physical body. Mm -hmm. So while he in that meditative state like that, he can bilocate is what it's called and go to the other location where he need to be at and then draw the atomic energy to him using the science of magnetism and create a synthetic uh, filament of a body around him where he'll look and feel real, but he can disappear at a moment's notice. Mm -hmm. This is a science of biolocation. Only the greatest of masters, he's one of the few that can do it. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, kind of like a Jesus figure in the Hindu culture or something? No, he ain't nothing like Jesus. He probably slapped Jesus. He probably slapped the shit out of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jesus is ISIS. Motherfuckers don't know that, though. So yeah, we ain't going to spoil their motherfucking yeah, date. Yeah. They think Jesus is a man. That's how they know all the motherfuckers that they be saying is the fake Christ. Uh -huh.